Henry. Johnson. There we are. All signed. Fine. Is that all right? Well, it will be when I've signed it. The check you asked for, Mr. Johnson. Thank you, Miss Woods. You can go. There you are. First premium. Thank you. Right, you're now insured for £100,000. Well, from this very minute? From this very minute. Oh. Almost worth dying for. Oh. Nothing's worth dying for, Mr. Johnson. Well, I don't know. You would... No. Hello. Oh, yes, thank you. Well, hello. You certainly picked the right moment to phone, I must say. What? Well, why should I want to go and look out of the window? Oh, all right. Excuse me. again and welcome to Who Done It. And uh, while that insurance company is getting ready to pay out what I would definitely call a short-term policy, we will try to find out who killed Henry Johnson. I see if you can work it out first. In the studio we have four inquisitors who will have a chance later to cross-examine the suspects. But our two guests are a lady who certainly doesn't look like a fish porter's <laughs> wife, the very dishy Dillis Lay. <laughs> And uh, certainly the best mother goose I've ever worked with, Terry Scott. Good afternoon. Our regular team is, of course, the lovely Onushka Hempel. And not forgetting the man who always wears a flower on this programme, Percy Thrower. No, I mean Patrick Mower. <laughs> Uh, four members of the studio audience are also sitting out there. We're trying to get the answer before the experts. Good evening. <laughs> now, don't forget, as you watch the investigation unfold, whoever is guilty may easily tell a complete pack of lies. Now, that's something that you've got to look out for as Inspector Sinclair, the flying Scot of the Yard, now starts his inquiries into the death of Henry Johnson. Yes, Inspector, he was insured for £100,000. I mean, the insurance policy was one minute old. The beneficiary was his wife and his son, Arthur. I shudder to think what my office is going to say. Now, there are more important things in life than your office, laddie. A man is dead. Of course. It's just that, well, it was such an extraordinary, well-timed death. It's not the timing that concerns me at the moment. How it was done. Who by? How? Well, that's obvious. He was shot through that window. I know that, man. I'm not a fool. Constable Webley is looking into that at the moment. Ah, there you are, Constable. Well, what did you find out? <clears throat> I entered the premises exactly opposite... Oh, man, man, you're not in court now. In your own words. Come on, start again. Uh, I... In your own time. Uh, I entered the premises exactly opposite this window as instructed by you, sir. The room appeared to be a disused office. However, I perceived two tea chests by the open window, and on them was a telescopic gun. Whilst looking through it, I could see you, sir. The gun apparently had been recently fired. Bullets of the same calibre as the rifle, an ashtray with the remains of a long, thin cigar and a telephone with the receiver off the rest. The phone appeared to be operative, but the line was dead, in the sense that there was no dialing tone. As instructed, I left everything as I found it and locked the door before reporting back here, sir. 
Very good, son. Yes, forensics can check up with the rest of the details. Now, let me see. It must be about 40 feet from that window across the canal. OK. Right, then let's get things straight. Uh, Mr. Johnson was shot about an hour ago, and he was shot through his office window. And he was lured closer to the window by a telephone call. At least that's according to Mr. Bailey. Well, I was there with him. I should know. Uh-huh. So you say. But there was no one there to confirm it. Now, Miss Woods, you are Mr. Johnson's assistant. Did you actually put the telephone call through? No, Inspector. It must have been his private outside line. Mr. Johnson was coming back from lunch and he asked me not to put any calls through. Ah, Mr. Bailey. 2.30. Right on time. Good. Very good. Do come in. I hope I haven't kept you waiting. Sorry, Late Lord. business lunch. Father, could I have a word? Not just now, Arthur. Miss Woods, no calls under any circumstances. Uh, come in. Thank you. And tell me, do you like insuring left-handed people? They say they're a bad risk. And after that, I never saw him again. Alive. Uh-huh. And are they, Mr. Bailey? What? Are they? Are left-handed people worse risks than right-handed people? <laughs> of course not. Not unless they get shot through windows. Mm-hmm. All right, Mr. Randall. Uh, you are Mr. Johnson's partner. Only for another week. I might as well tell you, Inspector, we've split up. Our contract was due to expire next week. There was no love lost between us. Henry was a terrible businessman. And another three months and we would have been bankrupt anyway. Mm-hmm. Now, as I understand it, this is an engineering company. Now, what exactly do you manufacture? Mostly custom-built metal gadgets made to specific requirements. Profitable? The trouble was that Henry was a genius at making gadgets and no good at making money. In fact, this morning, things came to a head. If we go on like this, we won't last another month. Will you stop watering those flowers and listen to what I'm saying? Well, I'm listening. And I hear and understand a great deal more than you can be credit for. What you're saying is, we're in trouble. What I'm saying is that we're broke and we've got to do something. Well, I'm sure you'll think of something. I have. And by the way, I'm not renewing my option. From next week, our partnership is over. There was nothing more to be said, so I left. Tell me, how long do these cigars of yours last? About 20 minutes, why? I was just wondering. Uh, Mr. Johnson, uh, you are a major beneficiary from your father's insurance policy. Do you mean to use the money to keep the company going? Well, yes, of course. Anybody here would tell you that. I didn't want to see my father's life dream shattered. Why, should that give me a motive? Well, naturally, but it also gives one or two other people a motive. Oh, I'm sorry. I have an appointment with Mr. Johnson. Ah, come in. Mm hmm Miss Reynolds. Yes. Who are you? I'm Detective Inspector Sinclair. Mr. Johnson has been shot. He's dead. Oh. I didn't know what to say. I had an appointment with him this afternoon. About what? Well, that's a confidential matter. Miss Reynolds was blackmailing Mr. Johnson, but it wasn't working because he was going to the police. Oh, that's a lie. The fact is, I work for a firm of auditors. Mr. Johnson had transferred the sales of stock, and I come here at his request to discuss the matter. Well, then why were you outside this morning? Uh, Miss Woods, I'll ask the question. Yes, but I think Miss it's Reynolds, were you outside the office this morning? Yes, I was. I was in the area, and I wanted to go to the hairdresser before I came here. Don't go on, Miss Reynolds. I must tell you, I was having lunch at the bistro nearly three hours ago. I don't think this meeting is a very good idea. The trouble is, there's not much time left. I thought this to you now. Look, a public restaurant has no place to do open it here. I've told you before this won't make any difference. Well, what do you know about it? This represents a sum total of my life. Look, the police are not stupid. What you're suggesting could send someone to prison for a very long time. Are you threatening me? No, I'm telling you. There's no going back on the course of action you're proposing. And I've told you that you've given me no other choice. Do you think I like the idea Shh, of... Shh, be quiet. We can be heard. 
But why don't you take my word for it that this is the answer? Because I don't trust you. Well, I'll tell you one thing. One way or another, it'll all be over by four o'clock this afternoon. I wasn't snooping. The voices were so loud, I couldn't help hearing them. Well, Miss Reynolds? Yes, we did meet at the restaurant before my official visit. Mr. Johnson wanted time to sort things out, and uh, I couldn't arrange it. See, but what was in the package? A gun, Inspector. No, of course not. It was his personal ledger. Mr. Johnson, did your father own a gun? Yes, a rifle. He used it to shoot rats along the canal out there. On oh, rats? I uh, see. It was licensed, Inspector. You can check it out. Yes, I'm quite sure that'll be all right, laddie. Shoot rats, you see. Uh-huh. So that would account for the shot the security man told me that he heard earlier on in the afternoon. Yes, I suppose so. Mm -hmm. So your father was a much better engineer than he was a businessman. But I'd be very surprised if he'd falsified the accounts. Inspector, I think I must tell you. My father was a very proud man. Randall persuaded my father to falsify the share accounts. Randall and Miss Woods planned the whole thing together. He trusted them. He was a man of very strong principles. He would rather die than let anybody down. He did. As for Miss Woods and myself, Inspector, there's nothing illegal in romance. The rest is cheap conjecture. By the way, did you know that Sonny Boy here has a medal as a crack shot in his rifle club? Oh, you shoot regularly, do you? Yes, once a week. I was shooting last night, if it's of any interest. Oh, well, that explained the trouble with your shoulder. I'm sorry? Well, you keep rubbing your shoulder. That would be from the recoil. Well, I'm surprised that a crack shot didn't know that. You get quite a recoil from a rifle. I've got it too. Well, in my case, it's fibrositis. Welcome back to Who Done It. Now the question is, who killed Henry Johnson and probably ruined his few shows into the bargain? Now look, don't take a wild guess. The Dewar Inspector Sinclair hasn't finished yet. So let me re recap the story so far. Uh, Henry Johnson received a phone call, was called to the window and shot. Now, his wife and son will benefit by 100,000 pounds insurance, a policy just signed and agreed by an insurance agent, Mr. Bailey. Detective Webley, uh, in a room facing Johnson's office across the canal, uh, found a cigar, an ashtray, and a rifle. Uh, Mr. Randall is Johnson's business partner, uh, but the business was uh, going broke, and uh, Randall was about to break up the partnership. Johnson's son, Arthur, is a crack shot and is suffering from a gun recoil on his shoulder. A mysterious lady, Miss Reynolds, arrives for an appointment claiming that she is an auditor, and Johnson's secretary, Miss Woods, thinks that she is a blackmailer. Inspector Sinclair, continues with his questions. Ah, uh, Miss Woods, where exactly were you when the shot was fired? In here by my desk. Did anyone see you? I did. I was going through some files with her. Uh-huh. What about you, Mr. Johnson? I was in my office, alone, I'm afraid. But I did catch a glimpse of the other two through my open door. Mm-hmm. And you, Miss Reynolds, you hadn't arrived yet? No, I was still in the restaurant. I had some more coffee. The staff will confirm that, I'm sure. I hope so. Tell me, did Mr. Johnson always keep a window box? Yes, he insisted on looking after it himself. Rare fuchsias. Ah, ah there you are, Webley. Just put it down here. All right. Oh, look at that. See, that's, uh, that's a queer place for drainage. The wood's been broken away from there. See that? Perhaps the bullet. Mm -hmm. Mr. Bailey, you said that after the shot you heard a splash. Well, I think so. Tell me, is anyone here left-handed? Hi, uh, Miss Reynolds. What happened to the parcel? I would rather not say right now. <laughs> I'm afraid you're going to have to say sometime. If not here, then in court. It's all right, Inspector. I can answer that question. Well? It's true that my father met Miss Reynolds at the restaurant. I know because I followed him there. I've been worried about him for some time, and 
I knew something was wrong. He was so anxious to conceal this meeting that I decided to go along there and find out for myself. Don't go. I'm Arthur Johnson, Henry's son. I want to ask you a few questions. If you have any questions, I suggest you ask your father. He has all the answers. What's in that parcel? It's none of your business. Well, I think we it argued is. for a few One minutes. I then grabbed the parcel and left. That's not my problem right now. And what was in the package, Mr. Johnson? I don't know. I came back here and put it in the safe. Is it still there? That's where I left it. Yes, well, I'd like to have a look at it. All right, Webb, we ask them all to come in now, will you? Thank you. Right, now I'm going to open this in front of you all as witnesses. Company accounts. Mr. Randall, why didn't you tell us that you saw young Mr. Johnson going into the restaurant after his father? I didn't see him. You were both in the restaurant at the same time. Why didn't he see you? I left the back way. Exactly. And that way leads to the house across the canal from Mr. Henry Johnson's office. Oh, no, Inspector. I left the back way in order not to chance bumping into Henry. In fact, I got back to the office way before him at about 2.15. Oh, I can confirm that. Yes, everyone seems very eager to verify each other's stories. Now, there's just one more thing I'll have to check. I presume that nobody else has used this telephone this afternoon. No. Uh, Webley, who's in charge of the diving section? Uh, Sergeant Morris, sir. What are we looking for? Dead rats in the canal? <laughs> no, no, no. They're the red herrings. <laughs> the, uh, Sinclair here. Can I have Sergeant Morris, please? Oh, the diving section, man. The whole police force knows that. Yes, and it is the red herrings that you mustn't get caught with. Right, before the panels start uh, putting our suspects under the third degree, let's say hello to them as they've now joined us. Here they are. Uh, right, panel, is there any part of Sinclair's revelations you'd like to see played back for a second look? Dillis, what about you? Uh, yes, please, John. I I'd like to see the dirty deed again, if I may, from the, um, from the phone call right through to the shooting. Please? The dirty deed done, fruit of the shooting, right, madam. Yes. <laughs> Terry. Uh, I wanted to see the handing over the, of the parcel in the, in the restaurant. Just that bit, when he's chatting up and gives her the thing in his hand, you know. For that. Right, it shall be yours. Anushka? I'd like the bit, the conversation between Mr. Randall and Mr. Johnson. The conversation the, between the, Randall, the Randall and Johnson? The Randall says they had, yeah. Yeah? Patrick? Yes, I'd like to see uh, where Detective Constable Webley, as he said to his inspector, he said, I entered the, uh, the room exactly opposite as instructed by you, sir. When he actually enters the room and uh, sees all the gun and things like that. All right. Please. Fair enough. Uh, let's start with some questions. Lillis, what about a question from you? Yes, please. I'd like to ask Inspector Sinclair a question. Two small ones, if I may. Inspector Sinclair, what, what in fact is the building opposite? Is it house, office blocks? It's a, a, a block of, of buildings um, opposite Mr. Johnson's office, which, uh, uh, which are unoccup unoccupied at the moment. Completely. Do you know how many floors uh, exist? Yes, there are, I believe, three floors. Three. Thank you. Yeah. Anything more? Anushka? Yes, I'd like to ask Miss Woods a question. Um, do you have an intercom? into Mr. Johnson's office on your desk. Yes, I do. You can tune in at any time and find out what's going on. Yes, I could. You can just press the button. He, would he know that you're doing this? <coughs> yes. As he would, light would flick <coughs> on in his, in his yes. room. Did you do this at any stage of the afternoon? No. You didn't. Thank you. Terry? Uh, yeah, I want to know desperately what um, the son, Arthur Johnson, wasn't it, was going to say to his father. I want to know in detail. You wanted to say something to your father as he was going to the office? Yes, I did. Well, I want to know exactly what you were going to say. I wanted to ask him, A, what was in the parcel, why he'd been to meet our auditor, and uh, 
to find out... Well, I wanted to speak to him at length because I felt he was maybe running himself into trouble. Well, you seem to me as if you were something very specific you wanted to ask. Not a great long conversation, just a long conversation you wanted. Mm. <coughs> very odd, isn't it? Mm. <coughs> Didn't like that at Patrick, all. Patrick. Yeah. Patrick. Yes, I'd like to ask uh, Miss Dorothy Reynolds, um, why did you find it necessary to lie to the policeman? I mean, you, it was obvious, if you don't mind me saying so. I mean, you look very nice now, but when you came in, you obviously hadn't been to the hairdressers. Uh, and then you said that, uh, you know... Well, um, uh, <laughs> I mean, why rude of you. In fact, I had been to the hairdresser, but uh, my normal hairdresser was away, and I had to have somebody else who actually wasn't able I see. Good. But even so, I mean, you said that uh, you, uh, you didn't tell the policeman, the inspector, that you were seeing uh, the deceased for lunch. Why? Well, he didn't ask. I, I saw no reason why I should mention it. Thank you very much indeed. Mm. Thank you. Um, uh, no, there I must stop you because we're ready for the first playback. The first playback is for you, Dillis. Yes. Uh, you wanted to see the dirty deed itself from when Henry Johnson received a phone call. Keep watching, here it comes. Oh, well, hello. You certainly picked the right mode to phone, I must say. What? Well, why should I want to go and look out of the window? What? Oh, all right. Excuse me. Wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that really is something, oh, yes. yes. I enjoyed seeing that again myself. Yes. Did it help you at all? Well, it did. Am I allowed to ask a question? Of yet? course you are. I, 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 I must speak to Mr. Bailey on this subject, actually, <laughs> if, <I'm, laughs> if I may. Mr. Bailey, are you, are you, um, have you ever had anything to do with guns or, or uh, shooting? Mm, not at all. Um, I mean, I've shot a gun on, uh, you know, on a fairground, that's about all. But that's as near as you've got. You seem yes. frightfully cool. I mean, how did you know that, in fact, the shot wasn't intended for you? Well, I didn't know at first that it was a, sh a shot. I had no idea what was happening. I but mean, you, didn't, you didn't fall. You didn't drop to the floor when you saw him with the, all the blood and everything. Well, you was, caught him. And I you was trying, that's very... exactly what I was trying to do, was to ca catch him, in fact. It was, in fact, if I may interrupt, very lucky of Mr. Bailey that he happened to bend down and pick something out of his bag when yeah, the shot was fired. Absolutely. Did I? Mm. Do you consider that you were um, fortunate? I, uh, I, yeah, yeah, uh, well, uh, what I was actually doing, I think, as far as I can remember, and you must remember, I mean, I was in a state of shock then. Not um, you weren't well, at uh, that no, moment. No, be yeah. no, after, no but before, um, I was actually leaning down to uh, sort out some more policies, which I thought I might be able to uh, persuade Mr. Shock, can I, yeah, yeah. Yes, if I may say so, I think that shock affects different people in different ways. I think suddenly yeah. something can happen. You can be paralysed on the spot, Patrick. But I, I, I've I, seen I, you paralysed on occasion. But I must say, we're not going to be moving, actually. <laughs> the, the extraordinary thing about, about uh, Mr. Bailey was the fact that when he'd given this policy for £100,000, I've never seen anybody um, so quiet and calm. I know any insurance man that I've um, dealt with has shook hands with £100,000 is a great moment, you know. Oh, yes, from this moment. And, uh, yeah. and, well, and as I say, I was... Oh, God, blimey, if I'd given somebody 100,000, I would look after him. I wouldn't let him go near anything for the first two or three minutes. <laughs> well, I, I tell, tell you, that's exactly, exactly what I was doing. Excuse me, Charlie, could I leave that as a statement rather than a question at the moment, because the next playback is yeah. ready. Uh, Patrick, uh, you asked for a rerun of what Constable Webley found in the disused office across the canal. Here yes. it is. As instructed by you, sir. The room appeared to be a disused office. However, I perceived two tea chests by the open window, and on them was a telescopic gun. Whilst looking through it, I could see you, sir. The gun apparently had been recently fired. Bullets? Yeah? Yes. Do you want to ask a question yes, about that? Um, if you don't, I, I'll, I'll let Terry pick up. Did you want to ask something? Uh, yeah, I'd just like to ask sure. Mr. Randall very quickly. Uh, you, you said that it takes 20 minutes to smoke a cigar. If these particular cigars you smoke, you put them down, do they go out? Yes, they do. Very easily? Yes, quite easily. Yeah. Sorry, Terry. Yeah, Terry, would well, you like no, to go I'm on? I'm worried about lots of things, you see. I mean, Peter Randall, um, you, um, you know, when you went into that room um, and you didn't listen to the telephone, did you? You didn't put your ear to it, did you? That, why didn't you? Weren't you interested? Yeah, I mean, there was a telephone there, you weren't going to interfere with it. Why didn't you put your ear to it and see what was sounding on the telephone? You didn't, did you? I'd sack you tomorrow. Well, look it up in your book, mate, did you? <laughs> As I entered the premises, oh, exactly. Oh, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now, you didn't, and yet, and the, on the other end of the phone, there was a there was a buzzing noise, wasn't there? Well, I did put my ear to it, sir. Well, I did, you did not. Have you seen the picture? You did not. 
I thought I did, sir. Well, you forgot. You better watch out. I'm sorry, uh, sir, if there is any disciplinary action to be taken Thank against you. the constable, they're okay. taken by the police. And may I just oh. quickly say, there is more than 40 foot across that gap. You're terrible. Can Lord. I ask Mr Randall a question? Yes, of course. Please. Mr Randall, can, can you tell me, uh, metal gadgets, what, what metal gadgets does your firm make? Well, quite a lot, actually. I mean, amongst other things, we make the springs for the heels of the Red Army dancers so they can leap higher. <laughs> 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 we make um, other components, we make switches, timing devices, uh, shower, electronic shower control units. And, and uh, tell, tell me, uh, change the subject slightly, are you left or right-handed? I'm right-handed. You're right, not amb ambidextrous even? Uh, no, not <laughs> publicly certainly not. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes. Question, yes, Patrick. Uh, sorry, no skill. No skill. Oh, I'd like to ask if ask Arthur a question. Do you fancy Miss Woods? <laughs> Who wouldn't? I know that's not good enough for me, thank you. Do you fancy? She is Ms. a very Woods? attractive lady, but you're not having an affair or anything. I don't think she fancies me. No. I, I, do you fancy her? Yes. You do. Thank, thank you, you very, very much, much indeed. Ready yes. for the next playback, uh, which is Anushka's. Uh, you wanted to see part of the conversation between Randall and Henry Johnson about breaking up their partnership. Mm. A great deal more than you can be credit for. What you're saying is we're in trouble. What I'm saying is that we're broke and we've got to do something. Well, I'm sure you'll think of something. I have. And by the way, I'm not renewing my option. From next week, our partnership is over. Hmm. You don't look very happy about that. Yes, well, Mr. Randall, um, what we were doing, you were smoking in your right hand this second, and you had it in your left hand then. Oh, sometimes I do that. I hold a, ci I hold a cigar your right or left. Yes. And why did you lean so heavily on that um, telephone? Was there any significance in your... Well, that was rather unconscious in a way. Being a businessman, sometimes I don't know what my right hand is doing. No. Um, but, how, uh, can, how convenient. <laughs> Thank yes. you very much. Yes, Patrick. Yes. Um, yes, I'd like to ask Miss Woods. Um, uh, how many people would know that the personal phone number of the, uh, the dead man? I've forgotten his name. Um, I wouldn't exactly, but I would imagine sort of uh, relatives and the wife. Yeah. Did, are you the, would you have written in the diary what was going to, you know, in the ledger, in the diary, it said the, the times, 2.30 and 4.30, I think it was, that people were going to 4 o'clock. I, in um, fact, didn't write those, no. You didn't? He, no. he wrote them himself? Yes, it is. So you didn't? Ah, yes. Okay. Yeah. 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 Terry? Well, I'm worried about uh, Miss Reynolds. Um, <laughs> Don't get too worried. Well, not, not nastily worried. Uh, do, are you honestly good with figures? Yes, of course. I, I'm an auditor. You handle figures? Yes, I do. I'm having trouble with mine at home. <laughs> at <my> <laughs> but I, 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 do, I do find that <clears throat> you are probably the most attractive accountant, but you really are a bona fide accountant or accountant's clerk. Because I was an accountant. Well, no, I am fully qualified. Are I, you? I've been qualified for about nine years. How long years. were you article? Another year, and in fact, I become a fellow. How long were you article? Five years. Five years. Thank, Thank you very much. Five. Terry, here is your playback coming up. You asked to see Henry Johnson lunching with Miss Reynolds as he produces a mysterious parcel. Watch carefully. I don't think this meeting is a very good idea. The trouble is, there's not much time left. I've brought this to you now. Look, a public restaurant has no place to... You don't have to open it here. I've told you before this won't make any difference. Well, what do you know about it? This represents a sum total of my life. The police are not stupid. What you're suggesting could send someone to prison for a very long time. Are you threatening me? Is that what you wanted? Yes, ruined my case. Mm -hmm. Absolutely ruined. <laughs> no, I am... Um, I'm just a little... I'd like to ask... Go from that to, to um, Miss Woods. Um, this telephone bothers me, rather. It came from an outside line. Uh, where could it have come from? From outer space or something? No idea. From a you know, floating telephone box? Because oh. I think there's a certain collusion between you and the chairman. <laughs> See, I feel I've seen you before somewhere. Uh, but you, how long have you worked in the office? I've been here about four years. About four years. And did you, did you know, how long have you known that the business is grinding to a halt? Well, I didn't really know, to be honest. I was you didn't only, really know? Well, I wasn't sure, because I don't know very much about mm. it. Working in the office five years and you didn't know it was grinding to a halt? Well, I knew that it, was, it wasn't very good, but I don't know exactly, because I don't know very much about figures and that sort of thing. Don't you? No. Yes, what, uh, yes, Dillis. Could I, uh, Miss Woods, Tis, Miss Woods, how, how well did you know Mr Bailey? Uh, I didn't know Mr Bailey. At all, and yet I noticed when you, when you handed the cheque 
uh, to the elder Mr. Johnson, you gave Mr. Bailey a, a very strange look, as though you'd known him before, or you disapproved of what was happening? Not that I was aware of. What was your reaction? What were your feelings at that particular moment? Um, towards? Uh, towards Mr. Bailey? I didn't have any... I mean, I knew what he was there for, but I didn't... You had none I at wasn't all? I think, actually, she, he trod on her foot. He trod on her foot. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Patrick. <laughs> yes, can I ask uh, Son Arthur, was the, uh, the relationship between Miss Woods and Mr. Randall a common office gossip? Yes, well, Mr. Randall always makes his flirtations obvious. There's and no secret. When you went to the, the restaurant following Miss Reynolds, um, did you know that uh, well, you followed the father? Did you I followed, followed my father. Followed not your father. father. Um, uh, were you, had you met Miss Reynolds before? Did you know the relationship with your father? No, I wasn't sure. I'd seen her flitting out, in and out of the office on occasions, but I had no occasion yeah. to speak to her. Or you said that your father's life dream was shattered. Uh, what, what was that? Well, he was a, an inventor, a Barnes Wallace, I suppose you might say. Yeah. And uh, he wasn't a good businessman. He's, Mr. Randall's quite correct. And if someone maybe had had the business acumen to go along with his inventions, which, some of them which were quite brilliant, um, he, he just wanted to become a well-known inventor. John, just ask the inspector one more quick question. Uh, just clear up something. Where, the glass, when the, when the bullet was fired through that window, the glass was in fact, like in all good detective stories, the glass was on the inside, was it? Yes, it was. It was. Thank you. There I must stop you, I'm afraid. You should have decided by now. So, panel, I'd like you to write down who done it, <laughs> along with any clues that you may have spotted. And that this, of course, applies to our audience panel as well. Now, if you're not sure, Could have I? a guess. You might win. Thanks. Right, we're now going to see how the panel are getting on. Mm. Terry? Mm hmm. Phyllis? Hello. Oh, ho! <laughs> Anushka? <laughs> Aha! And Patrick. Hey, why don't you? Ah! <laughs> 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 yes. Good. Now, let's have a look and see what we've got from our audience panel. Uh, no. 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 No, but one and a half clues. Well, congratulations, Ben Green. You've got one and a half clues. We didn't get the right. We didn't get the right. Good old Ben. Actually. So. Now let us see what we have from you lot. Uh, Terence, well, who done it and why? Yes, well, uh, I'm not going to tell you who done it till the end, you see. What worries me is this telephone that was buzzing, uh, therefore there was nobody on the line, and there was nobody on the line the other end. Very, very suspicious, that. There's something going on. There's a lot going on in the office. I'm not happy about this office staff at all. Yeah, keep it short, Terence. Yes, I've nearly finished. Um, the money angle, he was short of money. He was very good at gadgets. He knew he was in trouble. He said it'd be all over by four o'clock. The poor devil had done himself in. It was suicide. Oh, oh. there's a thought. Dillis? Oh, uh, yes, the moment of truth. I say it was Miss Reynolds with a second gun because the angle had to be low to uh, hit him in that particular place and catch the, the flower box in that way. I think the inspector had his men diving for this particular second gun and simply because everyone to my mind, was alibied at 2.30 at the time of the shooting, except Miss Reynolds. Thank you very much. Anushka. Oh, well, I Quickly, think please. it was Arthur and, Miss, Arthur and Miss Woods, and there was a device fixed onto the window box so that when he bent over, it triggered it off and he got shot that way, probably by the gun or another device somewhere else, because that was the setup, I think. And I think Miss Woods had helped out because she had been listening through that intercom and gave old um, Arthur the clue when to go ahead and when to trigger off. Thank blah, you very blah, much. Blah, blah. Patrick? Well, I think I agree with Terry. I think he obviously did himself in with a gadget on the window box and the splash was when it fell off. It's all triggered. His son said he was a Barnes Wallace. But I will go a step further and suggest that Miss Reynolds was seeing him about a court case which was written down in the book. And I think because Miss Woods is wearing a wedding ring that she would be the beneficiary because I think that she secretly got married to him. And that's what the court case was about. Thank you very much indeed. Good. Stand by. For the, stand by for the big reveal. Will the real who done it. Stand up, please. The tension is becoming unbearable. Oh, come on. <laughs> yeah! Ah! <laughs> yes. It was the, the suicide of Mr. Johnson himself. Congratulations. I think, Patrick, no. although you had it right, you went slightly off the beam, didn't Very you? A little bit off the beam, yeah. so I think we must give it to Terry. Congratulations, oh, oh, Terry. Fantastic. And well done, Patrick, again. Mr. Johnson, 
Are you not ashamed of yourself for putting all these people to so much trouble? Well, yes, I am, and if I may, I'd like to explain myself. Yes, I think you should. Mm. The floor's yours, sir. Uh, well, first of all, if my wife is watching, I'd like to apologise, darling, for all the anguish I've caused you and also the loss of £100,000, because suicides don't count with this insurance policy. And now, for those of you who are still not sure what happened, I'd like to explain how I did myself in. Directly after lunch, I went to the empty office across the canal, fired the gun and left a thin cigar to incriminate Randall. But I stupidly laid everything out for a left-handed person, which I am, but nobody else is. Now, just before I died... Oh, I'm sorry. Now, just before I died, <laughs> you may have thought you heard that clock ticking. And yet it wasn't during all the inspector's inquiries in this office. In fact... It was this clock mechanism you heard, attached to this gun, behind the window box. Now, when the timing device reached zero, set for 2.46 precisely, the gun fired, recoiled into the canal, which is why you heard a splash, and why the wood on the window box was splintered outwards. So, I arranged for an alarm call on my outside line phone for 2.45 precisely, which I got. When the operator rang off, I pretended to be talking to someone who called me to the window. Now, this is where I made a big mistake. A telephone cannot get the dialing tone back whilst the phone that made the incoming call is still off the hook. Now, the inspector got a dial tone on this phone, so he knew the call couldn't have come from the phone over there, which is still off the hook. <laughs> Stupid of me, really. But I don't regret it. I shall miss my lovely fuchsias, though. <laughs> Didn't hurt this time. <laughs> uh, thank you very much, uh, St. Johnson. I trust I don't meet you, you again for a very long time. Now, next week, uh, we're going to be up to 29,000 feet aboard a jet plane when a prisoner under escort is murdered right under the nose of his police guard. A story which we've aptly titled, uh, Fly Me, I'm Dead. Now, in the meantime, it's good night from our panel and our cast of innocent suspects. And remember, if you're going to water your window box tonight, uh, don't... Excuse me a minute. Hello? Oh, it's you. Yes, sir. Uh, huh? Go to the window and do what? <laughs> Not damned likely. <laughs> that was Mr. Johnson again. So on second thoughts, don't go anywhere near your window boxes this evening. Good night. <laughs> <laughs>